All right, in this video, I'm going to do another example of solving a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. So again, here's our quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. In this problem, I'm going to solve the quadratic equation 3x squared plus the square root of 11 times x plus 2 equals 0. So again, our quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. These will be our solutions to this quadratic equation. So again, a is the coefficient on the x squared. So our a value will be positive 3. Our b value is the coefficient on the x, which will be, in this case, the square root of 11. And then our c value in this case is going to be equal to positive 2. And if we plug all of this stuff into our quadratic formula, it says we get negative b, which is negative the square root of 11. And then it says we take plus or minus the square root of b, which is the square root of 11, squared, minus 4 times a, which we said is positive 3 times c, which we said is positive 2. And it says we divide all of that by 2 times the a value. So we'll have 2 times positive 3. And now it's just a matter of doing, again, some arithmetic. So we have negative square root of 11 out front, plus or minus. OK, so if we take the square root of 11 and square it, the square root and the square just basically kind of cancel each other out. So the square root of 11 squared is just going to be 11 minus, okay, so if we take 4 times 3, that's going to give us 12. 12 times 2 is going to give us 24. And then it says we divide all of that by 2 times 3, which is 6. So underneath the um, square root, we can simplify a little bit more. So we have negative the square root of 11, plus or minus. OK, so if we take 11 minus 24, 11 minus 24 is going to be negative 13. Again, we're still dividing by 6. Um, some people will stop here and say, well, there's no real solutions, because the value underneath the square root is negative, which is very much true. There are no real solutions. but I'm going to go ahead and break this down. If you've seen complex numbers, um, which we have, we're going to break this down and turn these into, into complex numbers here a little bit. So grab one more piece of paper here real quick. So remember, if you have a negative underneath a square root, so, okay, so the first part we're leaving alone. We have the negative um, square root of 11, plus or minus. Remember, if you have a negative under a square root, we can bring that out as an i using complex numbers, rewriting this as a complex number. We're left with 13. That doesn't really, that's not a nice perfect square, nor does it really factor. So I'm just going to leave that alone. So I'm going to write it uh, i times root 13 over 6. And again, kind of the more common way to write complex numbers. So we have negative uh, the square root of 11 plus or minus. Typically, you put the numerical part first. So I'm going to write square root of 13 times i over 6. And again, I'm just going to break this down into my two separate statements. It says our solutions will be negative the square root of 11 plus the square root of 13 times i over 6. And another solution will be negative the square root of 11 minus, so now we use the negative sign, square root of 13i divided by 6. And again, there's not really a lot of simplification that you can do here. Um, sometimes with complex numbers, though, we will break them up. So we can make this negative square root of 11 over 6 plus the square root of 13 over 6i. That'll be one of our complex solutions to our quadratic equation. And then we can just do the same thing with the other one. We can just break up the, fa the fraction. We can make it negative square root of 11 over 6 minus the square root of 13 over 6 
i, and that'll be our second complex solution.